Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you back to Portland, Victoria for the 2024 Classics by the Bay in this week's Classic Restos on the road. Now I normally start each Portland episode over there inside the bay, but because it's Portland, behind me a few large ships have docked. In terms of enormity, I'd just like to share one with you. Time now for some bigger machinery, and this is Shu Etsu Spirit. She's from Japan, and her call sign is number seven, Juliet Zulu Zulu. This workhorse is a wood chip carrier with a dead weight of almost 50,000 tonnes. She's just on 200 metres long, 32 metres wide, and has a maximum speed of around 16 knots, or 30 kilometres an hour. In the GoGo -Go engine room, there's a six-cylinder, two-stroke, single-acting diesel with cylinder bores half a metre in diameter and a 1.9 metre stroke. She produces 8,500 kilowatts of power and it's all in around 127 revs per minute. Shu Etsu Spirit is loyal to our waters and she was launched 8th of March 2007. What a massive draw card to Portland this year for 2024 Classics by the Bay. We have cast members from the original Mad Max movie. Johnny the Boy, Tim Burns, Dale Bench, known as doing the donut, as one of the bikers in the township of Clunes, then popped the mono as he took off. And of course, the big boss cop, Roger Ward, are joining us here today. Replica bike here, MFP, very, very cool stuff. And the lady behind me, well, she is not what she seems. No stranger to classic restos, Jason West. How are you, mate? Yeah, great, Fletch. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for having me. Good on you. No, that's okay. This guy deserves a bit of an accolade. Three beautiful EH Holdens. As you've seen before on classic restos, he's actually got four. 25% of the fleet yep. have been left behind. Unfortunately. You've done a 14 and a half hour drive here yes. to Portland. Yep, correct. And, and it's your first time and good on you for that, thank you. No worries, thanks for having me. Um, thanks to the organisers for the invite down and yeah, look forward to it. But definitely next year we'll have the, the full fleet here for sure. The EH Holdens never fail to please. And Jason's line up here in Winton Red, yep. you get a lot of followers, don't you we mate? a lot of followers, a lot of people come up and chat and, and so they've, they've seen the cars many, many times on the show and, and other social media. It's, it's a great, great atmosphere to and talk to people about them. Yeah. Do you get to many shows on an annual basis? Not a lot, probably over a year, probably only three or four, I think. But yeah, this is just um, yeah. you know, the first time down here, but yeah, definitely definitely having a great day. It's not about quantity, it's about quality, right? It's all about quality. The cars that are here, it's, yeah. it's good quality to right around. Good definitely. on you, Jason. Well, again, mate, great effort. Thank a 14 you. and a half hour drive, bringing the three EHs here to the, well, southern, southwestern corner of Victoria. Lovely. Quite a quite a fair way from south of Sydney, mate. Yeah, so long way down, but well well worth the drive, definitely. Good on yep. you. Well, great to see you, mate. Happy yep. have a yep. great day. Yep, you too. Have All a great right. day. Have a great weekend. Thanks, yeah. Fletch. Cheers. Now, in that interview, I know, I, I didn't ask Jason if he's done anything to the cars since we saw him last. Well, he actually has. He's washed them. 
Now this guy, he's been on Classic Restos before. Welcome back, Dale Bench. Oh, thank you, Fletch. It's good to be here on your show again. It's fantastic. Mate, this is a very special weekend for you, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it sure is, yeah. Dale being an integral part of Portland this weekend. Now, tell us about your pants. Now that, tell us about that. your pants, Dale. Some pants have been given to Dale well, uh, before, last night at dinner. Before these, I had some women's uh, tracksuit pants that I sort of modified a bit. And lo and behold, the lovely people running this uh, vent up here got together, especially Lisa. She made these leather ones that are more uh, like the original. Yeah, unreal. Uh, they stand out. Dale, known for the donut in Clunes, and popping the mono as he took off uh, as part of the, the biker gang in the first Mad Max movie all those years ago. Now, your first start was 1977, and the movie came out in 79, right? Late 77, filming in early 79, and, and my other crash on the bridge. Um, you going to mention that? or well, well, you just did. Well, the crash on the bridge was my mistake, and I flipped over, and there's a worldwide urban myth still that they think that guy, me, got killed. But, uh, That's the scene where the, the, the wheel rammed into the back of your helmet. I, even yeah. I thought 25 years ago that you died. But you're doing yeah. a great job for a dead bloke. Yeah, there was the, an urban myth rumour put out there years ago. But the interesting thing, when I look back at the call sheet of that day, it was Friday the 13th of January 1978. Yeah. In the main street of Clunes that day for the, the scene for the movie, how many takes? Were you happy with the donut? Was it one take? Tell us the story there. Okay, with, with the donut, I think I did the actual donut in one take. At first I showed them a half of one of what it would look like, and then we did, I think I did two turns, and I'm pretty sure that was just okay. Now the bike, Dale, Quacker Z900, the original bike from the movie, how cool is that? Yes, it's very cool. I don't own it, uh, but I've got to have a really good connection with the couple that own it, and we, we go to these events and... Uh, you know, do it together and live the Mad Max life and, you know, it makes me feel a bit younger. It's 46 years or something back now. The guys like yourself getting a bit of recognition now this last handful of years I think is extra special. For sure, yeah. I, I was sort of in the closet for 30 years after Mad Max in a way of being a bit timid and shy to go out there and, you know, I've been invited to some screenings and that. But I went to the 30th anniversary and, and showed my helmet there and the reaction was so good that since then, yeah, it's been fantastic. I'm just part of the world of all these replica owners and, you know, they, they make, make it happen because without the replica owners and the, and the nuts that follow Mad yeah, Max, yeah. it wouldn't be anything like it is, you know. Dale, it's always wonderful to catch up with you, mate, and uh, also keeping in touch throughout the years as we go along as well. So thanks for turning up today. Big show here at Portland for 2024, Classics by the Bay. Re uh, the original bike off the movie and the man himself. Good on you, Dale. Well done. Thank you, Fletch, and you're the man himself too, mate. Thank you. It's very nice. Thank you, mate. Fletch, this is the original helmet that I owned way back then in the filming of Mad Max and it's pretty much exactly the same as it was but all the, the padding's turned to dust. But uh, one important part on here is that um, the TC that's written, uh, scratched in on the back with a meat cleaver thing that was done at Clunes in late 1977 by the toe cutter himself, Hugh Keys Byrne. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My Coupe 4 is rare and very special. A real performance car with all-wheel drive grip. I'm not a car club bloke and I don't work on it myself, but I do have a great mechanic. One day, I might even get that HQ. When it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified service network. In 2024, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine 
experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2024 Detroit tour with Fletch. Email fletchtours at mail.com. And here in Portland in 2024, we have some stars in other categories. How are you, Brett? Not too bad, Fletch. Good morning to you. Thank you, mate. You've done a wonderful job here replicating one of the interceptor cars off Mad Max 1, a 1975 XB. Before we start talking about the car, describe the feeling. You arrived here this morning with the opportunity. You had Tim Burns in the front seat with you. How did all that go? Uh, very, very surreal. Like... Uh Words really can't explain it. Um, I've loved the movie since I was eight years old and it's just manifested into this obsession. Some call it crazy, but uh, it's got me through life and keeps me happy and keeps me smiling. And it's, it's an obsession that's gone right around the world too with a lot yes, of people. Yes, definitely. Um, the people that you meet as well, they're all the same. We've got the same sort of attitude and we just get along instantly. There's no working people out. You just know you love the same movie. So. Everyone's on the same page. Yeah, it's yeah. Regardless of what you do in your work, of your profession, when you're here on the field, on the day, everybody relates. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, the XB Falcon, what a score here. Hard car to find these days. 75 XB, 351 or 5.8 litre. You must feel pretty chuffed driving this. When I need to de-stress, I jump in it and just cruise down the highway. It's the same with the panel van there, like um, that's, a, that's a beautiful car to drive. The attention to detail, the piece of timber sticking out of the grill, yeah. replicating the movie scene where she drove through the gate, yet yeah, no stone unturned, You've, you haven't forgotten a thing have you? That's right, it, it, it's just watching it so many times and picking up on different parts of the movie, you go oh they did that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Even down to the surfboard on top, that's the correct colour and all that sort of jazz. Yeah, so, yeah. What did Tim Burns think of your car here? He loved it. He? Yeah, he very happy. Um, I couldn't get the smile off of my face, but uh, yeah. This is just amazing. You, you're living the dream, uh, your favourite movie. You're very much part of it. I know it means a lot to you, Brett, and keep up your fantastic work with your car and being so proactive uh, in the, the movie that's become an obsession to... Many thousands of people. Good on you, Brett. Thank you, Fletch. Now, this year here at Portland has made a little extra special with the attendance of one individual right next to me, Roger Ward. How are you, sir? Hello. Good. Good, Fletch. Doing well. Nice to see you again. You too. You too. It, it is really nice to catch up. Yeah. Um, are you enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a ball. Yeah. I've been to a few of these and uh, this is uh, top notch. Yeah. Yeah. Top notch. Yeah. Nice, nice location. Lovely people, and uh, I got a chance to talk to you last night and have a chat and a laugh. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, really. Well, on the behalf, welcome and thank you for coming to Portland. It means a lot to a lot of people, Roger. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're one of these guys that just never seems to change. Like in um, the movie, you started filming in 1977, came out in 1979, and the boss cop. Uh, you were bigger than life in the movie with the role that you had, uh, the boss of, of, of Max. And um, all these decades later, what, what 46 odd years later, here we are. And personally, I don't think you've changed that much. No, well, thank you. I think it's to do with the hair. You know, the lack of hair gives you uh, an ageless appearance, I feel. But uh, when I grow my hair back, my wife says, for God's sake, take it off. You know, so I can't, I'm not allowed to grow hair anymore because they look like what I am, an old man. How does it feel now when you, when you look back and, and see the part that you played? What does it, what does it feel like to you? Does it, does it tug at the heartstrings at all? It does, actually. Um, in the old days, the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, we went from one film to the other, one television or, or film, you know, either way, or stage play, whatever, but we were seldom out of work. You've played so many parts, TV shows, Aussie homegrown shows, so Matlock Police, Division 4, uh, you know, you, you played the bad guy, you, you did that well, you played the cop and you did that well, um, and there's no one else like a Roger Ward, you, you're so unique in appearance, and um, speaking of which, when you uh, had the scene with, uh, with Mel Gibson on the stairs in the Mad Max movie, 
So you straight away, that's tugging at the hard strings, I know. Can you re- can you remember the line? Can you quote one of the lines from the movie for us? When he came in and he, he quitted on you, he uh, yeah. he wanted to resign and you wouldn't accept yeah, it. Yeah, I think the main line there would be, you and me, Max, we're going to give them back. They're heroes. And he said, ah, oh, bullshit, you know. And I say, you know, you sounded pretty good there for a minute. But, um, yeah, they're, they're favourite lines. People come up the street and quote them, you know what I mean? A character named Fifi, which, uh, you know, it's kind of like almost a, uh, uh, a more of a minute sort of a name for such a big character. Um, who came up with the name of Fifi? It was George's idea. It's a film. My character was called, um, I think it was George McAfee or something like that. It's kind of like the name of a poodle, you know. <laughs> but no, Fifi, I, I, I like the name Fifi and uh, it never affected me, I never worried, never even gave it a thought. I think that's what helped to give you the respect because the name Fifi, it's simple, but yeah. as we just said earlier, representing such a large character. Yeah, 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 that's right. Roger, thank you so much for your time here today. It's wonderful catching up. I'll be uh, looking forward to having a quiet one with you this evening. Um, Thanks for your time. Thanks, Fletch. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good on you. Well done. Bye. With me now, Johnny the Boy from the Mad Max movie number one, Tim Burns. How are you, mate? Good. Now, listen, I've got to ask you a question, mate, when we did the last show. Mm. So um, I want to know how the ratings went because you tell me that if we got a certain number of views, I'd get some extra dollars out of it. Some (laughs) money. Well, you wouldn't read about it. it was millions, but it was just shy of the millions that you wanted. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. No, it was a pleasure. It was like a, a, I love the show. Loads of people watch it. It's a specialist thing, and it's got a, it's got a quality that's remarkable about all of this, yeah. which is that that this is a this is a craft, and this is a lot of people putting a lot of energy into something because. People don't always sort of feel happy in their life, but when they've got their project, they know what they're doing and why they're doing it, and it and it helps them. If I do this, I know I've done something that's that's meaningful, you know. But speaking of which, you bring a lot of enjoyment to people. You've had a, a continuous stream here of people lined up here this morning. You're signing uh, the, the the photos for them and the pictures for them, and. Going back to a time in the first Mad Max movie where you were tied up with such a tough bikey gang, but you were the innocent one, and you you well, always right. you always had the initiations that you had to carry out, didn't you? Well, that's right. It's a very peculiar. You don't know how uh, Johnny got in there, and and but also he was ambitious, but he was also like kind of he had a. a a broken sort of shattered kaleidoscopic mind you know and he didn't know who and what when they annihilated the chevy on the side of the road and they found you there and you were just in a state was yeah. that was meant to be you're in a state of panic or you were just delirious uh, absolutely it's a very good question and uh, they lost the page of the script that led up to that so we don't know we don't know what the cause was but looking at it now I think I was a little bit under the influence of something plus you played it so well though because you were so you were hysterical it was like your hand actions and you were you know you were yeah a very stressed out individual and you played that part you executed it beautifully Fletch that's really lovely that you said that it's very interesting that piece because that was the scene that I did for the audition Mm. to get the job and I always felt that I did it at the audition better than I did it on the day, you know. But you saying that meant that there's still something that carried over from the original thing of why I got the job, you know. As a character in the movie, you certainly went through a lot, didn't you? Yeah, well, you know, that's a, it, I was just a good bloke having a bad trot. That was all that was going on there. Well, mate, again, uh, accolades... For being accolades. such a, yeah. accolades to the acolytes because yeah, that's absolutely. the name of the bike gang in the movie the acolytes well tim i'm going to let you get back to it you've got a queue of people here waiting to see you we'll catch up later and uh, thanks again for turning up Mate, fletch, back, back yeah. here at portland yeah much love to you fletch and good luck with the show and uh, i hope you keep showing the fantastic work that these people do, you know. I really appreciate what you do. That's right. Thanks, Tim. We'll catch up soon. And all your beautiful people around here. 
Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And of course, if you own a classic or two, make sure they are insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 and the Shannon's Club awaits you. Why not sign up to become a member of Australia's largest automotive online hub? For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Moving on through Portland, as we do. Sensational event this year, especially with the Mad Max content. Are you having fun, Graham? I'm having a good day today. Uh, out with me, Sam in, original Sam in, HZ 1978. It's a Landis Blue. Uh, got the original motor in it, 308. I've spent about uh, eight years overall doing it up. It's got um, TB in the back, $3,500 stereo. Um, the only thing that's not a original in the car is the gearbox because I'm a bit old to be changing gears these days, Fletch. So it's got uh, dragway wheels on it with a white riding and an original dip and a lot of other special stuff. It's amazing. I've got this far into the interview. I haven't asked one question. Yeah, it's one uh, about 50 trophies overall all in the Western District. So it's... Um, been a very special car and a lot of people do like this car and they say there's much in his CMN and that's what I like about the car mostly. I love these shape Holdens, they are really really nice, end of the 70s, nice amount of style there and what you've done to it, inside is just beautiful. Graham, tell us why you've got the van, do they go way back to when you are a little bloke, like your first impressions, why did you want a panel van? I was back in uh, when I was 15 years old. Uh, I used to say to me mum, I seen this um, sandman going up the street and I said, I just want one of those sandmans mum. And mum said, thank Christ you got one now, Graham, because it's been a long, long time. You've been going on and on about it. And this one here I found in New South Wales, up in the hills up in New South Wales, about five k's out of Cowra. Now, Graham, you probably consider yourself a little bit of a Holden legend, yeah? I do, yeah. Holden's is what I really like and I do like all cars that are out there. All right, well, from our good friends at General Motors Australia, AC Delco, I'd like to hand you this Holden Legends pack. Something for the pool room for you, Graham, in appreciation of your support for the product. And, well, we can see the passion, and it goes back a long way with you. So enjoy the Holden Legends box. Thank you very much. And I have got a pool room, and this will go straight to the pool room as soon as I get home. Graham, enjoy the Legends pack courtesy of General Motors Australia and AC Delco. You can buy yourselves one of these online. Website details are across the bottom of the screen right now. Now for the last interview on today's episode, I want to do something different. Something that I guess is a little bit neutral. You know, it's uh, not in any particular camp, although we're talking a Chevy, but it's something very different. We have Neil, how are you? Very good, Fletch, yep. Great day, yep. lovely weather and happy to be here with the old car. It's a 1928 Chevy Speedster, right? This is a 1928 Chev 4 Speedster. Um, it's built especially to go to Lake Perkele, which is 30 k's out of Kalgoorlie. We go there um, every three years, we race it there. Um, it was built in the um, 2019. I've got two mature aged sons nowadays. Um, one's a, a furniture maker, he did all the woodwork on it and the other one's a, a great welder and that and he did all the welding of the body work. We used to meet every Wednesday at the workshop and um, spend Wednesday evening on building and it took us about a year and a half to build this one up. The motor's slightly modified, the cam's been done a little bit, the uh, crankshaft has naturally been ground and it's been, been balanced, it's got bigger pistons and it goes pretty well. 
Neil, thank you very much for hanging around for the uh, interview, uh, the last one on today's episode. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, keep up your fine work here with keeping the preservation of this 1928 Chev all in order. Thank you, Chev. Very much, Fletch. My pleasure. This vehicle was built by the Williamson family. Vehicles like this were popular in the 1930s for racing and hill climb events. Some of the vehicles were left original and others were a modified version of vehicles available at that time. Usually a sedan that would be cut down, lightened and the motor modified. This speedster with us here today began as a 1928 Chev Fortura. The motor is the original, a 1928 Chev 4 2000 cc. Also the chassis, wheels, gearbox, diff, radiator and existing body with some modification. Added to this recipe are the Holden pistons, Commodore valves, modified camshaft and topped off with a stainless steel exhaust and the American vintage racing seats, believe it or not, give it a fairly comfortable ride. The top speed reached on the circuit with this car was 100 kilometres an hour. From a 1928 Chev Roadster through to a trusty 1983 XE Falcon and most things in between, you have seen just some of the classics by the bay here in Portland for 2024. It's a special thanks to some of the original crew members of the first Mad Max movie, Tim Burns, Dale Bench and Roger Ward. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch. Thanks for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.